Hi students, welcome to DS Economics channel. Today we are going to discuss 2019 February Kerala State Eligibility Test Economics Previous Year Question. This is your part number 3. In this part we are going to discuss from question number 81 to 120 question. So those who come for the first time please subscribe to this channel and those who do not watch the previous videos they can watch the previous videos in the playlist. I have given the link of the playlist in the description box so that you can watch all the previous year uh, videos of Kerala set. So uh, let's start today's video part number three today first question question number 81 the concept of golden age was given by john robinson calder solo or mirror uh, concept of golden age golden golden uh, rule of capital accumulation or golden age given by uh, john robinson so mrs john robinson given the concept of golden age then question number 82 which among the following is not a property of binomial distribution which of the following is not a property of binomial distribution for a binomial distribution the most uh, coefficient of kurtosis is uh, not necessary so here first option it is a discrete probability distribution yes binomial distribution is a discrete probability distribution then mean of binomial distribution is n into p yes mean of the binomial distribution n into uh, p then variance of the binomial distribution is uh, is n p q yes variance is n into p into q and moment of coefficient of kurtosis is 3 uh, no this is incorrect because here for a binomial distribution the moment of coefficient of kurtosis is not necessarily 3 uh, in fact the kurtosis of a binomial distribution depends on its parameter and it can vary so the uh, here it it is incorrect and the other options correctly describe the properties of binomial distribution a b c but d uh, is not a property of binomial distribution so here option number d is correct then question number 83 the locus of points where one individual's indifference curve is tangent to the other individual's indifference curve is grand utility possibility crop curve product transformation curve consumption contract curve or utility possibility curve it is called called as consumption contract curve because the consumption contract curve represent the set of allocation where the indifference curve of two individuals are tangent indicating the both individuals are at a point of parity efficiency suppose this is the box and here indifference curve 1 2 3 for this side and uh, this is from other side if this tangent indifference uh, uh, here indifference uh, two indifference curve tangent uh, this type uh, so this is called as consumption contract then question number 84 the model of low level equilibrium trap recognizes the interdependence between low level equilibrium trap uh, it recognizes the interdependence between population growth, saving and investment, low level equilibrium trap given by Lenson. So first one is uh, population growth saving investment or per capita income investment or capital output ratio or population growth per capita income and technical progress or population growth per capita income and national income growth. Yes, this is the right option according to low level equilibrium trap because the low level equilibrium trap is an economic theory that describes a situation where low income level prevent people from saving an investment enough which in turn leads to a low rate of economic growth so here it is on the interdependence between population growth per capita income and national income growth when population rise uh, then per capita income falls and also national income uh, growth decreases so this is the relation between low level equilibrium trap then question number 85 calder's model of economic growth is emphasized on saving capital accumulation technical dynamism expanding population so calder's model of economic growth it is emphasized on technical dynamism because calder's model focus on how capital accumulation drives economic growth and development and it explores the relationship between capital accumulation productivity and growth rates so option c is right here 
ऑप्शन सी ऑल्सो वी कैन इनक्लूड ऑप्शन बी हियर बिकॉज कैलडर्स मॉडल फोकस ऑन हाउ कैपिटल एकुमुलेसन हाउ दिस कैपिटल एकुमुलेसन ड्राइव्स इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट एंड इट एक्सप्लोर्स द रिलेशन बिटवीन कैपिटल एकुमुलेसन प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड ग्रोथ रेट सो हियर मेन मेनली कैलडर्स मॉडल इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ मॉडल एम्फासाइज ऑन कैपिटल एकुमुलेसन एंड इट इज थ्रो टेक्निकल डायनामिज सो यर मोर एक्यूरेट आंसर इज कैपिटल एकुमुलेसन बट वी ऑल्सो इनक्लूड टेक्निकल डायनामिज देन क्वेश्चन नंबर एट्टी सिक्स एकॉर्डिंग टू परमानेंट इनकम हाइपोथेसिस द प्रपोर्सन ऑफ परमानेंट इनकम दैट इज कंज्यूम्ड डिपेंड्स अपन परमानेंट इनकम दैट इज कंज्यूम इट डिपेंड्स अपन इट डिपेंड्स अपन फर्स्ट वन इज रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ये सो द परमानेंट इनकम दैट इज कंज्यूम डिपेंड्स अपन रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट बिकॉज इट एफेक्ट्स द रिटर्न ऑन सेविंग एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट इंपैक्टिंग ओवरऑल वेल्थ एंड कंजप्शन सो रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज आल्सो इनक्लू इट डिपेंड्स ऑन रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट देन सेकंड वन इज द प्रपोर्सन ऑफ नॉन ह्यूमन ह्यूमन वेल्थ टू ह्यूमन वेल्थ ये दिस इज ऑल्सो इनक्लूड बिकॉज इट इम्पैक्ट द इंडिविजुअल्स परसेपसन ऑफ देयर परमानेंट इनकम एंड कंजप्शन डिसीजन सो ऑप्शन बी इज ऑल्सो इट डिपेंड ऑन दिस देन द परमानेंट इनकम हाइपर इट डिपेंड्स ऑन डिजायर टू एड टू वन्स वेल्थ ये दिस इज ऑल्सो वी कैन इनक्लूड बिकॉज डिजायर टू एड टू वन्स वेल्थ इट इनफ्लुएंस सेविंग बिहेवियर एंड कन्सिक्वेंटली कंजप्शन पैटर्न सो ऑल ऑफ दिस all of these factors can play a role in determining the proportion of permanent income that is consumed then question number 87 quasi rent equals so quasi rent equal to total revenue minus total variable cost yes this is the right option because it is the difference between total revenue and total variable cost so it represent the income earned by a factor of production over and above its opportunity cost assuming the factor is fixed in the supply so quasi rent is equal to tr minus tbc then question number 88 coefficient of determination or r square is in first order test second order third order or econometric test so uh, this is an econometric test r square because the coefficient of determination is a number between 0 to 1 coefficient of determination it varies from 0 to 1 and the number between 0 to 1 measures how well a statistical model predicts an outcome so the coefficient of determination r square is used to measure how well a statistical model fits the data so it is uh, generally considered a e- econometric model because it helps uh, access the goodness of fit of a regression model by indicating the proportion of the variance in the dependent variable that is predictable from the independent variable so uh, we, uh, it is called as econometric test then question number 89 natural rate of unemployment natural rate of unemployment exist when there is cyclical unemployment structural unemployment or labor force that is fictional or labor force that is fictional and structurally unemployed yes natural rate of unemployment nru it equals the pro- percentage of labor force that is fictionally and structurally unemployed fictionally means from one job to another job the gap between on uh, the time and structural due to change in the structure of the economy they are unemployed so it is equal to the percentage of labor force that is fictionally and structurally unemployed a uh, natural rate of unemployment then question number 90 activity activity analyst uh, analysis isoquant is also known activity analysis isoquant it is also known as linear programming isoquant option b linear programming isoquant then exact micro uh, numerosity arises when the sample size is when the sample size is zero when the sample size is zero uh, exact micro numerosity arise when the sample size is total zero then question 92 which of the following is a non parametric test of paired t non parametric test uh, kulzon wallis uh, men witney u oh, wilson single ranks binomial test 
the right option is option number C. It is a non-parametric test. Um, Wilkins uh, single uh, signed ranks because uh, this test is used for comparing two related samples or matched pairs similar to how the paired t-test compares two means but without assuming a normal distribution so this is a non-parametric test then question number 93 according to chamberlain excess capacity is due to excess capacity is due to price competition non-price competition selling cost free entry it is due to uh, non-price competition and selling cost excess capacity arises due to non-price competition and selling because these uh, are the key factors leading to excess capacity one is non-price competition another is selling cost so chamberlain's model of monopolistic competition suggests that firms maintain excess capacity as a result of engaging engaging in non-price competition such as advertising or product differentiation and incurring selling cost which leads to production level below the optimal capacity so option two and three option two and three are correct uh, option b then 94 the survivor technique has been developed by survivor technique has been developed by jeer stigler right option is jeer stigler option a uh, jeer stigler an economist known for his work on the industrial organization and the economist for information developed the survivor technique to analyze market structures and competitive condition so survivor technique has been developed uh, for uh, to analyze market structures and competitive condition option a jeer stigler survivor technique then question 95 an increase in the in an economy's marginal propensity to import an increase in an economy's marginal propensity to income it does it increase the multiplier effect no it reduce the multiplier effect yes when import uh, increase it reduce the multiplier effect to a change in the autonomous variable yes option b is right here because when the marginal propensity to import increases a larger proportion of additional income is spent on imports rather than on domestic goods and services so this reduces the overall impact of an initial change in autonomous spending on the total level of economic output thereby reducing the multiplier effect so option b is right here then question number 96 identify the wrong statement related to kuznets consumption function uh, wrong concept first one is consumption function is equal to c is equal to a plus b yes consumption function is equal to a autonomous consumption b mpc and y uh, level of income no so option a is correct then it remains remains constant over a long period of time uh, yes it remains constant over a long period of time according to kuznet then uh, in kuznet's consumption function there is no autonomous consumption no this is incorrect because in kuznet's consumption function there is autonomous consumption a a means autonomous consumption so here a present autonomous consumption is present here but uh, the statement is uh, there is no autonomous consumption so this is incorrect then kuznet's consumption function curve starts from the point of origin yes uh, kuznet's consumption function start from the point of origin so a b d are true and only c is incorrect so option c is right here then question 97 consider the statements relating to nifty relating to nifty first one is statement one nifty 50 is a free float market capitalization weighted index uh, yes nifty 50 is indeed a free float market capitalization weighted index this means the index is weighted by the market capitalization of its constituent stocks adjusted for the proportion of shares available for trading this is correct then statement two nifty 50 is owned and managed by india index services and products uh, yes uh, because uh, nifty 50 is owned and managed by the indian index services and products which is a joint venture between the national stock exchange of india and uh, Chrysal, C R I S L, Chrysal, N S C and Chrysal. So the statement two is also correct. So one and two both are correct here. Then question ninety eight. The theory of circular causation was coined by. 
सर्कुलर कॉजेसन थियोरी गिवेन बाय गुनर मिड्रेल सो ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट सर्कुलर कॉजेसन गुनर मिड्रेल डेवलप द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सर्कुलर कॉजेसन टू डिस्क्राइब हाउ इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल फैक्टर्स इंटरेक्ट इन ए री एनफोर्सिंग सैकल पर्टिकुलरली इन द कंटेक्सट अफ अंडर डेवलप्ड इकोनोमिक्स सो सर्कुलर कॉजेसन थियोरी गिवेन बाय गुनर मिड्रेल देन क्वेश्चन नाइंटी नाइन व्वेन मार्जिनाल रेभिन्यू इज जीरो द सेप अफ द पी सी सी प्राइस कंजपसन कर्विज भर्टिकल हराइजेटाल डाउनवर्ड और अफवर्ड व्वेन द मार्जिनाल रेभिन्यू इज जीरो द पी सी सी इज पी सी सी इज इट इज हराइजेटाल सेप बिकज इनकेस द प्राइस मार्जिनाल रेभिन्यू द प्राइस रिमेन कन्स्टाट हियर प्राइस रिमेन कन्स्टाट सो हियर ऑप्शन बी इज राइट बिकॉज हियर प्राइस रिमेन कन्स्टाट एज द क्वांटिटी डिमांड चेंजेस बिकॉज मार्जिनाल रेवेन्यू इज जीरो सो मार्जिनाल रेवेन्यू इज जीरो मीनिंग व्हाट इट मीन्स द फार्म इज ऑपरेटिंग एट ए पॉइंट हर द टोटल रेवेन्यू कर्व इज मैक्सीमाइज सो कन्सिक्वेंटली द प्राइस कंजपसन कर्व वुड भी हराइजेटाल इंडिकेटिंग दैट द प्राइस डजेंट चेंज विज चेंजेस इन कंजपसन हियर प्राइस रिमेन कन्स्टाट कंजपसन चेंजेस बट प्राइस रिमेन constant because here marginal revenue is zero so uh, the shape of the pcc price consumption curve is horizontal then question number 100 according to js mill the tendency of profit to be minimum can be checked by profit to be minimum it can be checked by first one is technological improvement yes because um from by technological improvement innovations can increase productivity and efficiency so it leading to higher profit so option a is right then uh, extension of foreign trade the profit can be uh, minimum can be checked by extension of foreign trade yes by extension of foreign trade expanding markets through foreign trade can increase demand for goods and services thereby potentially rising profits so option b is right then government borrowing and on productive expenditure yes here uh, while not the most recommended approach government spending can influence economic activity and potentially affects profit levels so we also include option number c so all of the above are true here then question 101 the root mean square devi deviation about mean is root mean square deviation it is called as standard deviation root mean square deviation standard deviation then an exception of stoffler samuelson theory is exception of stoffler samuelson that is mezler paradox repeated question then question number 103 assume that aggregate supply is positively sloped and there is a decrease in the mark markup on variable cost then what happened uh, then aggregate supply uh, here uh, aggregate supply is positively sloped means aggregate supply here shift rightward and the price level here price level decreases aggregate supply shift rightward price level increases no price level decreases yes option d is correct because a, uh, when it assume that aggregate supply is positively sloped and there is a decrease in the markup on variable cost then aggregate supply shift rightward and the price level decreases and the real output here increases because a decrease in the markup on variable cost reduce the cost of production for farms which increases aggregate supply so as aggregate supply shift rightward the price level tends to decrease and the real output increases so option d is right then question number 104 in a perfectly competitive market if the supply curve has a negatively slope then the imposition of a specific tax results in supply curve is negatively slope or downward slope negatively slope supply curve is then when we impose a tax it result in uh, result in increase in price which is equivalent to tax or increase in price which is greater than tax yes it is uh, it is an increase in price which is greater than tax because it is negatively slope so when the supply curve has a negatively slope which is uncommon but possible in certain cases the imposition of a tax increases the price more than the tax amount so this is because with a negatively slope supply curve negatively slope supply curve the reduction in output caused by a tax leads to a larger price increases farms reduce supply so option b is right here then question number 105 uh, gresham's law Uh, what does Gresham's law states? 
it states that bad money drives out good money out of circulation yes when there are both bad and good money uh, bad money drives out good money out of circulation because gresham law states that bad money drives out good money this means that when two forms of money are in circulation and both are legal tender but one is perceived to be of lesser intrinsic value lesser in intrinsic value uh, that is we call it a uh, bad money and the higher value money like good money will be uh, hold and disappear from the circulation suppose here uh, a uh, um, paper note that is uh, written as 10 and a coin that is also written as 10 here the intrinsic value of paper note is very minimal and the intrinsic value of the this coin this uh, suppose this coin is made of gold so here the face value is 10 but the intrinsic value intrinsic value or the metal value is more than the face value so this uh, this is called as this is called as good money here this is called as good money and this is called as bad money so here bad money drives out good money because uh, here uh, good money we hoard the good money uh, uh, and bad money circulate we circulate the bad we hoard the good money and it dis disappear from the circulation so this statement uh, says that it states that bad money drives out good money then it operates under under the bimetallic standard yes it op operates under the bimetallic standard means where both uh, gold and silver coins are used as a currency Bimet bimetallic means uh, there are two uh, metal that is gold and silver earlier in earlier times uh, there are two uh, metallic money are uh, there one is uh, from gold and silver then third one is this is right then third one is it operate when paper currency notes circulate along with gold and silver coins yes gresham law shows that when both paper notes and silver and gold coin are in uh, circulate in the market no, then this type of situation arises this can operate when paper uh, currency not circulate along with gold and silver coins as people may prefer to hold onto the coins with intrinsic value and spend the paper money so option c is right here then option a b c all are right so all of the above are right according to gresham's law then question number 106 the reaction curve approach is a more powerful method of analysis of oligopolistic market because it allows the relaxation of the assumption of identical cost identical supply or identical output demand identical demand and uh, supply or identical cost and identical demand yes the reaction curve it shows the identical cost and identical demand it is more powerful method of analysis of oligopolistic market because it allows the relaxation of the assumption of identical cost and identical demand uh, how this in the reaction curve approach we know firms do not need to have identical cost structure or uh, face identical uh, demand condition this approach allows for uh, more flexibility in modeling the strategic interaction between firms in an oligopolistic market where firms can react to each other outputs decisions based on their own cost and market condition so option d is right then question number 107 which of the following statements are correct uh, statement one the correlation between the age of the applicant for life insurance and premium of the insurance is yes this is correct because no uh, it shows that the correlation between the age of the applicant uh, for uh, life insurance and the premium of insurance premium of insurance is positive positive means uh, as um, age of a person increases the risk of the insurer also increases when age increase risk also increase which generally leads to a higher premium so therefore this statement is correct then uh, statement 2 arithmetic mean of regression coefficient is greater than the correlation coefficient uh, no arithmetic mean of uh, regression coefficient is not uh, not necessarily greater than uh, correlation of coefficient this is incorrect because the arithmetic mean of regression coefficient is not necessarily greater than correlation coefficient in fact the relationship between the regression coefficient and the correlation coefficient depends on the scales of the variable 
and the correlation coefficient is usually smaller or equal to the regression coefficient in absolute terms so this statement is incorrect then statement 3 scattered diagrams helps in determining the degree of correlation yes by scattered diagram uh, it helps in determine the degree of correlation because uh, by visually showing the relationship between two variables oh, we plot it in a scattered diagram so this statement is correct so option 1 and 3 are correct 1 and 3 are in the option number a then question number 108 a mathematical question an investment consultant predicts that the odds against the price of a certain stock will go up during the next week are 3 is to 2 ratio and the odds in favor of the price remaining uh, the same are 1 is to 3. Uh, then what is the probability that the price of the stock will go down during the next week? Uh, this is a probability type cost. So uh, first uh, to find the probability that the price of the stocks will go down uh, we first need to determine the probability of each event particular each event we have to find out the probability of each event then the price uh, each event like first one is when price goes up then uh, price remains same and then price uh, going down so uh, first we calculate the price goes up so the price goes up ratio is 3 is to 2 odd against the price goes up are 3 is to 2 ratio so this means the probability of the price uh, going up is uh, if we write probability of price goes up this error mark uh, is equal to what ratio 3 is to 2 price goes up means 2 by 3 plus 2 this is the ratio formula so this is 2 by 5 and uh, now in second that is first ratio 3 is to 2 second ratio 1 is to 3 second ratio it indicate that odds in favor of the price remaining the same remaining same price remaining same is equal to 1 is to 3 1 is to 3 this means the probability of price remaining the same probability of price remaining same constant is equal to what ratio 1 is to 3 means 1 by 1 plus 3 remaining same so 1 by 1 plus 3 is equal to 1 by 4 then last one is um, probability of all positive events must sum to be 1 last one is we know that the probability of all possible events must sum up to 1 means first rise then constant then fall probability of uh, price fall uh, we do not know the value of probability of price fall but this all uh, when we sum up it sum to 1 so here let uh, price uh, goes down that is uh, P so here uh, first price goes up then plus price remain constant plus uh, price goes down so now the value of this all sum of the values is 2 by 5 plus 1 by 4 plus p because price down we um, let the value of price down is equal to p so 2 by 5 plus 1 by 4 plus p the sum of the all of the sum is equal to 1 so first just find out the value lcm 5 plus 5 into 4 20 so 5 for the 20 4 into 2 is equal to uh, 8 8 plus uh, 4 5 the 20 5 1 the 5 so 8 plus 5 uh, so 8 plus 5 by 20 plus p equal to 1 this implies uh, 13 13 by 20 plus p is equal to 1 uh, this implies p value is equal to p value is equal to 1 minus 13 by 20 so 1 minus 13 by 20 is equal to 20 into 1 is equal to 20 20 minus 13 20 minus 13 is equal to 7 7 by 20 so here what is the probability 
the probability is 7 by 20 that the price of the stock will goes down during the next week so price of the stock of the um, uh, goes down is equal to 7 by 20 so right option is 7 by 20 7 by 20 in the option number a so right option is option a then question number uh, 109 uh, jerky vera test is meant for testing uh, jerky vera test is meant for testing uh, autocorrelation structural change residual normality or heteroscedasticity it is used for residual normality jerky vera test is meant for testing uh, residual normality because uh, specifically it test whether the skewness and kurtosis of the data match those of a normal distribution so it is test and jerky bear test is meant for residual normality then question number 110 the basic assumption of bommel static model doesn't include doesn't include what uh, the basic assumption of bommel model bommel static model indicate what it bommel's model sales revenue maximization so sales revenue maximization so it includes first conventional cost and revenue function yes it include conventional cost and revenue function at the part of the model so option a is correct then the firm attempts to maximize its total sales revenue subject to a profit constraint subject to a profit constraint yes uh, the firm seeks to maximize its total sales revenue while maintaining the minimum profit constraint so this is also correct then the minimum profit constraint is exogenously determined by the demand and exception of the shareholders the bank and other financial institutions yes the minimum profit constraint is exogenously determined by the exception of the, uh, different shareholders banks and other financial institutions this is also correct then last one profit is an instrument variable whose value is endogenously determined no this is incorrect because however profit is considered a constant in the model not as an instrumental variable that is endogenously determined it is determined within the model itself uh, endogenous means so itself instead the profit constraint is uh, imposed externally not internally not endogenously it uh, uh, imposed externally so option d is incorrect here so right option is option d then one 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 the value of foreign trade multiplier is the value of foreign trade multiplier always equals to one determined by the marginal propensity to consume yes the value of uh, foreign trade multiplier it determined by the mpc determined the um, determined by the value of mpc because foreign trade multiplier it is also known as open economy multiplier it measures the impact of an e increase in export on national income in an open economy so its value is influenced by the mpc and the mpm means marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to import so marginal propensity to consume and marginal propensity to import so uh, uh, import so these two it depends on mpc and mpi marginal propensity to consume and import so the multiplier is not always equal to uh, 1 uh, here option 1 is incorrect because it depends on mpc and mpf so it determined by the marginal propensity to consume uh, because the higher the mpc the greater the induced consumption leading to a large multiplier then third one is it is positively related to the mpi no it is positively related with mpc not mpi because the multiplier is negatively related with mpi means marginal propensity to import it not positively a higher mpm means more income is spent on imports reducing the impact of the multiplier on domestic income so option c is also incorrect so only b is right here then question 112 the theory of unequal exchange owes its name to unequal exchange given by emmanuel unequal exchange emmanuel uh, so the theory of unequal exchange uh, uh, it owes, owes its name to um, emmanuel he developed the concept to explain how trade between developed and developing countries leads to unequal gains primarily due to differences in wage level and in uh, the terms of trade 
then next question 113 the marshall learner condition is said to hold when the sum of the price elasticity of demand for imports and exports uh, is always equal to 1 between 0 and 1 or greater than 1 marshall learner condition it says hold when the sum of the price elasticities of export and import export uh, plus import price greater than 1 so option c is right here because the marshall learner condition states that a depreciation or devaluation of a country's currency will improve its trade balance if the sum of the absolute values of the price elasticity of demand for imports and export is greater than one so this means that the combined responsiveness of imports and exports demand to price changes must be sufficiently elastic for a currency depreciation to have a positive effect on the trade balance then next question question number one one for list one and list two first one is poison distribution poison distribution mean uh, mean and variance are equal poison in poison distribution mean and variance are equal then binomial distribution mean is greater than variance in binomial distribution mean is greater than variance then normal distribution in normal distribution mean median mode all are equal in normal distribution we know simple mean median mode when mean equal to median equal to mode it is called as normal distribution then chi square distribution chi square distribution mean is greater than uh, mean is the degree of freedom in chi square distribution mean is its degree of freedom so a2 a2 b1 c4 d3 option a option a is right here then 115 the quantity theory of money is a truism according to quantity theory of money is a truism according to uh, Des Irving Fisher James Keynes Keynes according to Keynes quantity theory of uh, money is a truism uh, means quantity theory of money criticized by Keynes so Keynes says that quantity theory of money is a truism because the quantity theory of money is considered truism according to Keynes in in his work particularly in the, uh, in the treatise of money Keynes uh, critic criticize the classical quantity theory of money suggesting that it is a tautology or truism under certain conditions but uh, doesn't fully explain the complexities of an economy especially uh, in the short run where liquidity preference and the interest rate plays a crucial role then question number uh, 116 according to pico's equation of cash balance approach the value of money value of money it varies directly or inversely it varies inversely with the proportion of total real resources or income which people wish to hold in the form of legal tender uh, because according to pigos case balance approach uh, this is a part of the cambridge version of the quantity theory of money so this the value of money is determined by the proportion of the total real resources or income that people wish to hold in the form of money specifically the value of money varies inversely with the amount of real resources that people wish to hold as money in other words we can say as people hold a greater portion of their income in the form of cash balance the value of money rises so option b is right here then question number 117 for each one percent increase in inflation the central bank tends to raise the nominal interest rate by more than one percent point this rule is called Ockham's law taylor's principle yes this is called as taylor's principle taylor's principle this uh, uh, refers to the taylor's principle which is a part of the taylor rule formulated by economics john b taylor the taylor principle suggests that for each one percent increase in inflation the central bank should raise the nominal interest rate by more than one percent point to stabilize the economy and to control inflation so option b is right here then the uh, basel approximation method is a improved version of this is not uh, in the no, this is an old question so left is but the your right option is uh, option number c both minimum sell cost method northwest uh, correct method then question number 119 limited information maximum likelihood method liml is a dash systematic method single equation method blue method or none of this so limited information maximum likelihood method is a single equation method single equation method option b because uh, it used for estimating 
parameters in models where the focus is on a particular equation while treating other equation in the system as known so it is particularly useful when dealing with exogenous regressors in a single equation context so option b is right here and today's last question according to home progressive state is a cheerful and the hearty state of all the different orders of the society j smith malthus adam smith progressive test concept given by adam smith so option c is right here because adam smith progressive test uh, is in reality the cheerful and hearty state of all the different orders of the society but this progressive state is not endless it ultimately leads to stationary states so uh, this concept was given by adam smith so this is all about for the today's i hope you get some knowledge from this video if you uh, like please like the video also comment in the comment section uh, so that if you have any doubt you can clarify and those who come for the first time please subscribe to this channel for more such updates and in the next part we are going to discuss 2018 kella set so thank you all jai jagannath